Dearest F.A. Dear F.A. To whom it may concern. In the last few months, we have been hearing a lot of... Is my drone going to be compliant? What module should I DJI buy? DJI said they won't update my I drone. Will not my module comply. is backordered and it won't be here in time. Chatter. My client wants me to fly. Am I going to lose Am them? Am I grounded? Will I be able to fly? The FAA. Mmm. Commotion. As I'm sure you have too. The chatter has amplified in the last few weeks with the approaching September 16 deadline. At Pilot Institute, we consider ourselves... <sighs> well, it's one thing to not like the idea of remote ID, but it's another to be forced into non-compliance. Chatter, anecdote, brewing storm, we had to investigate. We wanted to know, is the industry ready for remote ID? And with your help, we collected data. 2,084 of you responded, and I would say within hours. We are pretty confident that our survey results are statistically significant. How confident are we? Well, for the statistics nerds, just like me, there's a 99% chance that the real data out there is within plus or minus 2.8% of the surveyed value. That's pretty darn good. Now, 66% of you said that you operated under Part 107, 53% under recreational rules, and 11% under public safety COA. Yes, that's more than 100%. That's because people can fly under more than one set of rules. Now, for everyone who responded, 49% said that they own at least one standard remote ID drone. That means that it's compliant already. But 51% said that they own at least one drone that needs a module in order to comply. 10% said that they are going to be flying a drone under 250 grams under recreational rules, so they're exempt from compliance. And then 5% said that they would only fly at a FRIA, which is the FA Recognized Identification Area. Now here's where the data actually gets really interesting. It was actually so good that we wrote an open letter to the FA asking them to delay remote ID until March of 2024. Now you may be wondering why. Well, let's find out. Of those of you that said they need a remote ID module, 42%. 42% said that the price is a concern and that they have not ordered a module just yet. That's one in five UAS pilot. Now, in addition, 53%, it's a big number, of those of you that said they need a module also told us that they will be forced into non-compliance. Forced into non-compliance, that's right. 23% said that's because the modules are back ordered. 11% said that's because they bought one, but they haven't received it yet. And then 19% said that DJI would make their drone compliant in December. That's right, that's a little bit of a ways away. Now, if you add all of those together, it means that one in four, one in four UAS pilot will be grounded or forced into non-compliance on September 16 if the enforcement date is not pushed back. Now, it gets worse. Based on the data taken directly from the FAA website on September 1st, that's today, there are currently 540,000 recreational flyers. That's all based on the number of trust certificates that have been issued. Now, I'm sure there is a lot more people than that that are flying recreationally, but that's the official data. Let's keep it conservative. Now, based on our data, 45% of recreational flyers told us that they need to have at least one module. 12% of recreational flyers also reported that they would voluntarily not comply with remote ID requirements. Now, this puts the number of modules needed for recreational flyers at around 194,000. 194,000. Now, adding on to that, the FA reports that there is 331,000 certified remote pilots. And our data showed that 59% of those pilots need at least one module, okay? And even though 12% said they wouldn't comply with remote ID, this puts the number of modules needed for just remote pilots at at least 171,000. Now, if your math is right, and our math is right, that's about 365,000 modules combined, okay? Now, you might be wondering, 
How many of those modules have shipped so far? Yeah, it's a good question. It's kind of hard to find actual data, but you guys reported to us that only 3%, only 3% of you have received a module and are currently compliant using a module, okay? 3% of 365, that's about 11,000 units. All right, now let's talk about the supply chain because, well, there's a hiccup there. The main US suppliers for Blue Mark Innovation, who makes the cheapest self-contained module at the moment, $130, they report that they are currently receiving 150 units per week, 150 units per week, all right? Now we could only find six approved remote ID suppliers at the moment on the FAA website. Now, if the FAA pushes the compliance date to March of 2024, like we're asking, that's 26 weeks for six suppliers to produce 350,000 units. You do the math, that's 2,200 units per manufacturer per week. Possible? I don't know, I guess we'll find out. Now, in the survey, we also gave you the option to tell us that you would not comply with the mandate. And Tell us why. Now, the results were pretty clear. Privacy concern was at the top of the list. Module pricing was second, and then followed pretty closely with safety concerns, module availability, and the module weight. Now, I did end up finishing my letter to the FA. I actually sent it to them this morning. Now, the ball is now in their court. Quite frankly, it's always been in their court. Now, except now they have our data. And last year, they pushed the enforcement for manufacturers from September to December. Now, we're hoping that due to the supply issues, they will push the enforcement to a much further date, like March. Time will tell. Now, I wanted to personally thank all of you that filled out the survey. Uh, we'll continue to share your voice with those that want to listen at the FAA and anywhere else. But in the meantime, I'll see you in the next video.